everybody my name is dr charm and yes i am a real naturopathic doctor but today i'm coming to you with a little bit of ratchetness i always love my stories as my grandmother liked to call them which is my reality tv and my tv shows child so today i am going to review 90 day fiance episode 5 excuse me season 5 episode 8 the calm before the storm all right let's get into this episode because this was a mess Let's talk about Kim and Soldier Boy. So, first of all, we were introduced to Soldier Boy back like two or three seasons ago when he was going with Lisa, baby love. Lisa, baby love. So, uh, she was, uh, he has a, a type, you guys. It's like the 50 year old white woman who's bossy. So, I kind of liked Kim at first this season because she kind of seemed to hang back a little bit. But y'all, Kim didn't jump the gun. She didn't got real aggressive. So, the whole thing is that. You know, she came to uh, Kenya, no, Tanzania. She came to Tanzania to uh, see him uh, shoot a video. And so she was part of the video crew. She was telling the, the guys, hey, y'all didn't do this right. Y'all not treating him like a star. The barber's clippers don't work. His hair looked fucked up. So she's, you know, been kind of like a fan because he met her on, as you know, like I think she DM'd him as a fan. But the thing is, is that, you know, this whole trip is supposed to see if, they're going to work out as boyfriend and girlfriend. So he books separate rooms and everything. And, and she's just after, oh, when we going to have sex? When you going to give me some D? When you going to give me the D? I'm like, damn, Kim, girl, you should have brought you a toy or something first, okay? And, you know, so you could just take the ease off. Like, what, what they call it? Uh, uh, um, take the edge off. Because she's over here begging this man for sex. First, she was like, I want us to stay in a room together. So he moved his luggage into the, her hotel room honey she had that thing set up like a bridal suite she had the the roses and the flowers and stuff i'm like is this a room or the honeymoon suite so first of all that's a bit much i don't think any man gonna want to walk into a room and this is the first time you didn't spend the night with the woman and she got rose petals everywhere and uh, uh ducks and stuff made out of towels and shit i don't know i think it's a bit much so he's like, hey, you know, let's just take it slow. And she's like, you know, I'm only here for a few more days. When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? You don't want me? When you gonna do it? So then he storms out, goes downstairs. She's running after him. Then he comes back up and she's still, you just tell me if you, you don't want me. And then she started bringing up her son. Like, what does a son have to do with this? My son is not gonna like how you're treating me. I'm like, girl, I need you to read a relationship book or something. This is too much. She doing too much. And it's obvious, like, let it flow. I, I have never really heard of any woman having a problem getting a man to sleep with her. But, you know, except for they being too aggressive. So she's too aggressive. All she got to do is wear something, get her some Savage Fenty Rihanna long, lingerie, and, you know, put some makeup on, put her some Dolce & Gabbana on, you know, perfume or something, and just be real sultry and chill with the shit. Like, hey, you want to come in my room? Okay, you can sleep over there. You don't give him the eye. Come on, girl. You don't know she had on a Walmart. Look like she got it at Walmart on sale. That shit was 60% off. That little uh uh moo she had on talking about, look at this. And he's like oohing and on. So we all know. If he oohing and on over at Walmart like that, baby, uh Mr. Usman is trying to be popular. So we didn't know who Soldier Boy was. The Soldier Boy that I know about is the one that, you know, cranked that. Superman that, whoa, but this is the Nigerian soldier boy, and it is obvious that he is just really trying to be on TV because he don't want that woman because I don't know any man that's going to sleep in a room with a woman that he's attractive to, attracted to and not feel just a little bit turned on. So moving on from Kim and soldier boy, Caleb and Alina. So Caleb's the guy from Arizona, and Alina is the little person from Russia, and so, you know, they're dealing with the fact that she didn't tell him that when they first started talking that she was still living with her ex and actively in a relationship with her ex. So she finally told him they went to the Turkish baths and spa and got, you know, got uh, soaked up and lathered up and looked like they had a good time. And then her little uh, companion, Elijah, finally left and Caleb said it's nice for us to have a long time. I personally think Elijah was getting on his nerves, you know, just all in the business, all in the teeth. So they had a really chance to talk and I think they're just kind of taking it slow. But she just wants to know like, where does it stand? Where do I stand? I mean, girl, y'all ain't gonna be together but three weeks. I don't know anybody can make decisions like that in three weeks. Come on. So I don't know. But the, the tea is behind the scenes is 
Alina is going to be fired from the show. They're working on, TLC is working on editing her scenes and things out because she had a, a, a show of racism. I would think that a little person would have more compassion for people who may be looked down on in society or judged or stereotyped in society, but apparently she doesn't. And she said she was going to a nigga party. Child, they got uh, pictures of her, I don't know if it was on Instagram or one of her social media, with her in uh, almost black face, and she was dressed up with a cap on and some uh, a dark beard, and she had darkened her face sometimes, she going to a nigga party. And then she tried to run and say, oh, I didn't know what that meant. Um because it's a language barrier. Child, that girl speak English better than you and me. So she ain't got no problems with English. Now, there may be some people on that show that have a language barrier, but honey, Alina is not one of them. Because her and Elijah be like, what's the tea girl? Did you ride on his disco stick? Like, they even know the vernacular and the lingo and stuff. So no, I don't think that's it. So we won't have to worry about seeing her on the show anymore, but it will be interesting to see how they uh, edit her out of the scenes and kind of resolve it and, and you know, fix the storyline. But, um, you know, that's Alina and Caleb Chow. Good riddance to her because she said something about Asian people, too. I mean, she's just really disgusting. Like, who talks like that? It's just ridiculous. So the next couple I want to talk about is Gino and Jasmine. Child, Gino and Jasmine. We finally saw Gino without a hat, child, because he, you know, he got that uh, hat fishing going on real bad. He's scared to be seen without his hat on. I'm like, is it that bad? Is your head funny shape? Do you got a cranial disorder? Like, what's going on? Uh, so they, this episode, uh, Jasmine has paid for them. Well, she has booked a trip for them to go to a private island. They had to fly on a private plane and honey, they were on that little turbo prop. I said, that's the, I want to ride on that. That's the type of planes that get in the plane crash and people die. Child, uh, uh, no, it didn't even have a jet engine. Like put me on something with a jet engine if you're going to take me out. So, but they got on a little plane and they went to this island. It looked really nice and everything. Um, and looked like they were having a good time and she didn't finally relax, but doom, doom. Hello, she finally, she got a, um, a message on a social media from one of his exes talking about her and Gino is still talking. And we know from previous episodes that Miss Jasmine is jealous and she's cuckoo. She's a really, I mean, I really would like to give her the number to my therapist because the way she cried and went on just because he had said that uh, the lady who he used to be with had decorated the house in nice colors and Jasmine just flipped out and went crazy. She threw a freaking tantrum like a two-year-old. So this time, um, you know, I think that she does have some justification because not only did he contact or he's going back and forth and contacting with the exes when he said that he wouldn't, but it looks like uh, for the preview for next week's episode, he actually sent nude pictures uh, that Jasmine had sent to him and sent them to his ex-girlfriend. I mean, that what a violation. But baby, when she was asking him, well, what did you do? Did you text her back? What did you say? And he was looking like, I'm like, oh my God, this man is looking like a, 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 battered, a battered husband. I mean, he looks scared to talk. I said, oh Lord. So I'm, I'm concerned for Gino's safety, honey. I'm concerned for his safety. So it'll be interesting to see next week exactly what was sent to the ex-girlfriend. So next uh, couple, now this couple wasn't on the episode, but I still want to talk about them a little bit. Memphis and Hamza. So Hamza's in Tunisia. I think he's gorgeous and he's really sweet. And um, and and Memphis is the sister girl from, I don't know if she's from Memphis, but she's from the States and she's got a couple of children. And so she's gone down there to meet with him and she's staying with the family and she wants them to get married in three weeks. So the last episode, they were going to Tunisia, uh, going to like one of the cities in Tunisia. So they go to the embassy and get all their paperwork to get married. And he made them late because he didn't have a ride. And then they're, you know, they got a hotel, but the hotel was really, really nice. So, you know, we're just looking at their conflicts. And the problem I have with Memphis and Hamza is I think Memphis just overreacted. He, he, she, you know, basically Hamza told her that he was 27, getting ready to turn 28 when he was 26. It's not like he was 45 and told her he was 25. I mean, a, a couple of years. So, of course, she got suspicious. Now she don't trust him. She's talking crazy to him. She's yelling at him. And I really think she's overreacting. And when she's talking to him, she's talking to him like she his mama. Like, who want to marry somebody that's talking to you like, your, like, like uh, you, you know, you're their child? Somebody that need a green card. 
So he putting up with that shit so he get his papers. It's obvious. But I do think they make a cute couple. I think he does kind of like her. But she talks to him like he's a child. And she nags him all the time. It's too much, girl. Calm down. Simmer down. And she's like, I need a husband for my two kids. And I'm not talking to you. We all leave here. I mean, girl, I understand. You're a single mom. You need a father figure for them children. But girl, slow down. Just chill. I think a lot of women on this show need to just slow their roll just a little bit. Just take a chill pill or something. My God. So we'll see what happens with them next week if they're going to, you know, go forward and towards getting married. Um, so Mike and Jimena. Lord have mercy, little Mike and Jimena. This stuff is a hot mess. Jimena, who has two children by two different men, one of the men, one of the children was conceived in jail deliberately. It ain't like... Oh, you know, me and my man was together. He got me pregnant and he got sent up the river. Like, you know, he, he, you know, he had to go sit down for a little bit. He in jail. And then I happened to get, you know, get pregnant and I'm pregnant while he's in jail. No, this helper went up to the jail and slept with the man with intentions of conceiving a child, knowing that the man was going to be in jail all this time. Girl, are you nuts? And then the other, um, and I don't know about the other little boy's father, but I do know that she was dating a Sicario, a, a Sicario in Spanish. That's a hitman. I don't know if anybody ever seen that movie, Sicario with Benicio Del Toro, but baby, that was a good ass movie. I enjoyed that. So she was dating a, an assassin, y'all. A whole assassin. She don't have good taste in men, but she finally got a hold of Mike. Mike is not the cutest guy. He looks like a little elf. He ain't the cutest, but he's nice. He's good to her kids. And right now, Mike is paying all the bills in that house. Her father and his wife live in that house. She lives in that house with her kids. He's paying for the bills. He's buying the furniture. He's doing everything. And she had the nerve to talk about, oh, she don't like his table manners. He burps at the table. He farted while he was kissing her. Uh, I think they were in the cab or in the Uber or something. And he pulled out a tissue and he blew his nose and then wiped his hands or something before he put the tissue back and he would, you know, didn't get a garbage can. So he needs a little work. Oh, and he can't cook. The spaghetti was raw. She didn't want the children eating the spaghetti. Talking about they might get colicos. That's Spanish for uh, for uh, colics or something. You know, get a stomach ache because he had made them some spaghetti and it wasn't cooked all the way through. It was too al dente. So I'm like, come on, man. You had a, you got two kids by two different baby daddies. You done dated a whole assassin. You got a baby with a man that's in prison for God knows how long. He got a nerd to talk about this man. Okay, so she, you know, so he went to her dad and asked for her dad's hand in marriage and dad gave his blessing. And then they start talking about, you know, they're getting ready to go to a dinner. It's almost his last night there in uh, Columbia and he wants to take them to dinner. And she's thinking, well, what if he proposes? Well, I don't know about his table manners. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Honey, his, uh, her mother and father said, hold your rolls, hold your rolls for us. Uh, this man is paying the bills. He paying all the bills up in here and he is in America, and they, the money goes further, the money is worth more, and your children will have an opportunity. They will have an opportunity to get an education. So your roses, so her parents walked her back off the ledge, because she was probably going to go and get her another assassin child. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, looked like she was crying in the preview with the proposal, so I don't know if it's tears of happiness or what. But girl, you might have to bite that bullet. He might not be the cutest to look at, but shit, you did it with him now, and he paying them bills, and the kids love him, and he's nice to the family. So you might want to think about it. Table manners can be worked on, okay? Um, Ella and Johnny. Uh, so Ella and Johnny, um, I can't remember that couple. Oh, shit. Who are Ella and Johnny? I done forgot. Uh, ben and let's go on. Ben and Mahogany, Lord. Ben and Mahogany is turn. It's, it seems like every season on 90 Day Fiance, they got to come up with somebody that's being catfish. In the previous seasons, it was David and Lana. Um, uh, David, Lana turned out to be real, but she was getting all this money. David was one of the guys he had been cat or had been communicating with this woman on this chat for seven years and hadn't met her and had spent thousands of dollars. And he finally met her and she didn't want him, of course. And then they, you had Yolanda and William. Now, now Yolanda got catfish because they had the guy on there. He was like a, a uh, he looked like he was Italian or Middle Eastern or something. It turned out she was getting catfished by somebody in Nigeria. But thank God for her kids. You know, they got her out of that situation. But we now have Ben and Mahogany. Ben and flew all the way to Peru. All the way to Peru. And we don't know, uh, we don't know where Mahogany is. And first of all, how many people do you know uh, in the Latin American name Mahogany? That's 
that's a sister girl's name. So I don't know if she's using an alias or something. Has she committed some bank robberies? Like, what the hell is going on? But it'd be interesting to see if she shows up. But right now, the man got off the plane. He's texting and calling her. She's like, not responding. I mean, that's got to be, I feel for him. That's got to be the worst feeling. And you didn't flew. I mean, that's thousands of miles. That's down all the way down to the tip of the tip of the, uh, 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 the hemisphere down there. He flew all that way and this girl can't even meet him or even return his call. I think that's terrible. So, but it looks like they did. I did see a picture of her online. So I think eventually they must meet, but who knows? It might not be to the daggone last season finale or something. So as far as for the couples on 90 Day Fiance, oh, Ella and Johnny. I now remember who it was. Ella is the, is the uh, plus size uh, lady who's dating the, the Chinese guy. Honey, Johnny said he don't want to come to America because he worried about coronavirus. He's over there in China where they locked down. I mean, they ain't got no rights over there. But, honey, they locked down. And they, they are not getting the Rona over there like, they are, like we are over here. And he said, I'm not trying to go over there and jeopardize my life. Uh, and, and possibly get the Rona messing around with you. So he's apprehensive. And I think she said that she's going to try to coordinate where they can meet up in Dubai or somewhere like that, where they can meet uh, in, a, in another location instead of him coming all the way here because he's really concerned for his safety coming to America, you know, with us, with, you know, with the uh, les le bon temps roule, we over here like kicking in, uh, you know, and the, and the people that don't want to wear masks out in public and, and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, they don't got those kind of rules in China. China, they lock your ass up if you uh, you want to, um, you know, have some problems. So that has been my review of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. <laughs> Thank you. Say no more.